All right, welcome back. Are hey you there. ready, babe? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, well, this is episode six of You, Me, and Swinging. Yes, let's get it. All right, and so one thing we wanted to start the show off was with, we recently have, we've been walking a really thin line lately because we <laughs> have been scared to go um, cross the rules because we didn't really read the rules when we started YouTube at all like any of the community guidelines or anything and the violations of what necessarily so far we haven't gotten anything but which is good yeah so but we're kind of tired of walking the line because we've noticed it's kind of impacted our podcast a little bit we're a little tight we need yeah. to loosen up so so from now on we're just going to learn as we go and and hopefully it works out honestly yeah we're, we'll be fine i think we're gonna have a lot more fun you guys will enjoy to watch us a lot more too hi riley all right, so let's get right into it. I'm Cody. And I'm Katie. And this is another episode of You, Me, and Swinging. Woo, let's get to episode six. All right, so today, we've this week we kind of had, um, it's been semi-busy. We had the release of my music video come out for my band, um, which ended up doing pretty well. That was really exciting. Yeah, we oh, advertised yeah. everywhere, so it was really hard for you not to see it if you follow us on our page and stuff. But It's the first music video I've like fully directed and produced alongside with How was my it? singer Noah. How was it learning all that it was, music video It was editing? difficult, but it was fun at the same time. I, I'm, I love learning something new all the time, and so it was challenging, so it was really fun to get into that. That's good. That's good to hear. It was really... Out, it was fun watching you learn all of that because we don't know much about um, photography or videography videography as it is. So watching you make that music video and watching behind the scenes about everything that he was teaching himself basically was so interesting. Oh, yeah. And I'm excited because it'll continue just to just get keep getting better and better from here. And you forget like he, he looked up a lot of YouTube videos and you get a lot of help just looking at music. Video, uh, well, yeah, looking I mean, up that's videos. what they say. YouTube can teach you anything now, really. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. All right. So today we wanted to get into something that we've gotten a lot of questions about. We've gotten a lot of people asking us if we'll um, go over this. And the question was, how did we know being non-monogamous was right for us? And what are you doing, fool? She's like, I'm enjoying my time. <laughs> She finally got her cone off, so she's very, very happy. Oh, yeah, she just got fixed. Oh, well, Bubby. So she's two weeks. With a, yeah, a week and a half she had her cone on. But anyways, let's go back onto topic. Yeah. Oh. And which was, so what's one of the first things we said, babe? Um, Do you want to talk about our first sign or do you want to talk about? Yeah, why don't we go ahead with the first time we like started experiencing something. So whenever we started talking about this conversation, we were like, hey, we actually had a, like a big flag about that we were not for monogamy so like my 18 it was my 18th birthday right yeah your 18th birthday threw a big party yeah it was like after i graduated high school and we threw a big old party with my friends and stuff and for some reason out of the blue we have never talked about it before right yeah never we and never approached it we we were jealous people at that time very really jealous. jealous very it was like toxic jealous to that point honestly yeah We'll admit that it was toxic jealousy and it was like no bueno. And But all of a sudden that night we um, kind of let our honesty out and said, hey, we kind of want to have a threesome. And if there's somebody in the house that wants to have a threesome with us, we're totally comfortable and down with it because we trust each other ultimately. Mm -hmm. And that we didn't know that was a flag until honestly now because we were looked back on it. It's like, OK, that kind of makes sense why we're so okay with it because after that night we didn't talk about it we were just like oh yeah i guess if it happens i didn't come out as bi yet either so it's like that was all new riley wants to contribute <laughs> to the podcast <laughs> Ooh, she's like i am the mic <laughs> um and yeah so like that night we spent trying to all right riley this is not gonna work uh, nope all right but we spent that night trying to have a threesome with her best friend and her friend was willing i remember but just was scared at the time yeah which makes sense it's because we were like honestly because we were young and she didn't know like our relationship behind the scenes or didn't know us as a couple very well she knew each of us individually kind of but not as a couple so i can feel how she wouldn't be comfortable and she's never done it before and stuff like that oh yeah oh, so yeah. we like we never pushed it nothing like that and then after that, we kind of stayed quiet about the whole being wanting to sleep with other people. We just like muted that as if that didn't happen. And then it, yeah, that that was a fun night, by the way. That was a crazy night. I remember half of that night. I don't remember the last bit. Yeah. 
It was hey, stop, stop licking. And so, when we that was our first like little kind of experience that we had our into innuendo the, and into it into the lifestyle, and that was how long ago was it's that? It's so that was memorable. Maybe two or three years ago, huh? When did, it was in 2018. It was about three years ago, three. Years. Yeah. Oh wait, no, yeah, three years ago. Can't do math. Nope. Oh, you answered that so fast. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I did most of your math homework your senior year. <laughs> That's true, too. I'm the math whiz. I do the taxes. All right. And so what? why do you feel... Yeah, she does do the taxes, <laughs> I'll admit. What, why do you feel like it's right for you, babe? Um, well, coming to the terms of it, uh, me as a person by myself, being non-monogamous, that means not being sexually with one person only, right? is because I feel like my own person. I control as my person as my person. And I I don't know, I just don't feel tied down at all. So it it's very freeing and relaxing to be in a relationship like that and re, um, compared to a monogamous relationship where it feels more tied down. You kind of, you are the relationship with that person, but in the non-monogamy, it feels like you are your own person and then you have your relationship. And that's just from experience from going from monogamy to monogamy. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> if I can like pronounce anything right. Um, what about you, babe? What was what was something that makes me feel like it's right for me? Um, yeah. Well, one thing is I felt very sexual. I mean, I've told you when I was in high school, I didn't truly think that I was going to ever get married because I didn't, you know, want to be tied down. Yeah. And so I sort of think that um, it works for me because as a child, I was kind of into that mindset and into like all that. And honestly, I think another reason real quick is you and me have been with each other since high school. I mean, I lost my virginity to you and that, I mean, lots of, you hear about a lot of like, you know, marriages, high school marriages that break up within you know three four years because they never they get tired of only being with one person yeah and although i don't know if i would have gone tired i mean we never got to get to that point that's true but but it's kind of like helps already eliminate that fact like already kind of takes that fear out of my mind whenever we were i mean i was always scared like well we lost our virginity to each other what if she wants to experiment experience you know because she's never gone to experience anything else i feel like a lot of people have those fears yeah oh yeah definitely but that was like my biggest fear and so when we kind of got into this it kind of like eliminates it and it's it's also me too like what if i get bored i was always scared like i was i was positive i wasn't going to but because you hear all these stories it kind of worries you and makes you think that what if it happens to you too that's really interesting and so um i never once got bored of you but but I, i was always you know we kept especially us we kept hearing about our you know couples that we were growing up with getting bored with each other so kind of like it puts a fear in you and makes you think that's what's going to happen yeah we had we seem to always be around like broken relationships or people just not right for each other and so i get what you mean by that yeah and so kind of like doing that kind of like helps put an ease in my mind like we get <laughs> i get to experience experience you know other people other than you and youtube riley stop it and you get to experience that type of stuff too. And the fact you that know? we're both comfortable with it makes it like 10 times like we're able to express that to each other because for other monogamous relationships, you can't just sometimes you can't go up to your partner and say, hey, I would like to experience something else with somebody else. And normally it get taken to offense like, oh my gosh, am I not good enough for you? They get automatically insecure. And we can we know for sure that we love each other and it's not an insecurity thing at all. It's like, oh, it's like a cool experience thing. We do it all together and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And, you know, another thing that I, another reason I think that it's right for, for us in particular is because we're both very sexual people. And I mean, we both enjoy, (laughs) I mean, and you're bisexual, so it helps you kind of experiment while being in a relationship. It lets you explore your other side, because if we never got into it, you would have been bi, but never got to experience it for, you know, however long. That's very true. I agree. Um... And then I, yeah, sorry. I forgot what I was saying. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I feel like also as well, 
we had a lot of insecurities and then getting into this really made us more confident unlike you would think it would oh yeah oh yeah i mean you kind of have to be when you're in a room with four other people <laughs> like when it's you and one other guy you're judging yourself compared to the other guy but after a while you kind of stop doing that Good. i did at first but you stop i stopped doing that and i was kind of like okay you know we're all just having fun like i don't need to be so self-conscious and i've i i've always been a person that's been very self-conscious about my like weight and all that but what are you doing oh, oh <laughs> the dog sorry <laughs> but we dang it riley made me lose my train of thought but about the ins- your- yeah the insecurities um but as we continued down this it helped me realize Oh, you know, I mean, when you get confirmation from other people and all that helps you start feeling better about myself and doing this, it kind of makes like another thing real quick that I want to point out is being in this lifestyle, like before we didn't really care about our weight if it fluctuated or not. But now, I mean, we enjoy looking good. We've always have, but we kind of lost it after a while, stopped caring. You you know, you get that extra relationship weight being too happy and too in love. And oh, yeah. Just and, like and it really packed on. on on us. Um, But we... We thrive to be in fit. Honestly. Yeah, we, we always wanted to. And so then when we joined this lifestyle, I mean, you kind of want to look good for other people. So it kind of helped give us that push to keep making sure we look as good as we possibly can. Um, Although been slacking because of COVID, but... Stop we'll get into it it's not and i i don't want to say that it's all about uh getting fit for everybody like getting fit well but it's also accepting what you're accepting your body parts because everybody is different and you really get to realize that because you see a lot of people naked a lot of people naked when you're in this kind of um lifestyle unlike monogamous people so you see everybody else's flaws you're like okay a lot of people have the same feature or they're like oh they have a different feature like this they're not all supposed to look the same you know i honestly thought like my vagina was very shaped weird or there was something was wrong with it but it's like no everybody is different and i learned to accept that about myself and it just that also grew my confidence and then uh, then wanting to work out and make it even better oh yeah and i'm not saying like yeah like oh it's everything's about looks (laughs) when you're in this no we just it's kind of like just inspiration for us to continue looking good it's kind of like being single people like to look good and and honestly, that's how we's, we've always been. It just kind of gives us that extra push to do it now. Oh, and I want to talk about a point that we, I didn't talk about earlier. I didn't mention to Go you. Go ahead. So also Go about ahead. um, what I love about non-monogamy is that we're never jealous anymore. Because when we were jealous, we were so toxic and not good. And it was just like the fighting was awful. And, and what we were fighting about was pathetic. And it's just like, okay, there was those were all insecurities. And getting over this jealousy and knowing that our partner is comfortable and trusts us completely and fully is an amazing feeling. And just you have to throw yourself into that. And mm-hmm. it may be scary, and mm-hmm. you know, but you just have to trust them. Maybe that's another reason that we are meant to be in it is to kind of help us get over those. So that way our relationship would continue thriving longer and longer. Because we knew the jealousy was just... It, jealousy really kills a lot of relationships and a lot of people don't know that so if you see that you are in a relationship and you guys are just like constantly jealous about something always i don't recommend that's good maybe like figure out what's going on it's an insecurity between either you or your partner oh yeah and not that like we've said in the past monogamy is not bad everybody has things everybody has something specific to them you know some people thrive like we've said open relationships polyamory Everybody has something different to them. So it's whatever goes for you guys. Um, But we kind of, like she said earlier, it also, we get to find out a lot about ourselves. And so this has really helped us kind of discover who we are sexually a lot too. Like um, learning new things in the bedroom. Yeah, learning new things in the bedroom. Like me learning um, about more about like, I know I'm more comfortable in my sexuality than I've ever been because, you know, I could be in the room with anybody naked and it doesn't really affect me. You know, if it's a guy, I don't. That's good. That doesn't turn me on. So like it confirms, I know that I'm, confirms my sexuality and helps me figure it out better. Just like you, you figured out more that you were for sure by when we started doing it. Oh yeah. Because whenever I, I kind of like came out of the, I came out of the closet um, I didn't have any experience. And so whenever I got that experience, I had that reaffirmation, that confirmation that 
and then yes i am gay like and i am also bisexual. like you found out more that you were dominant more finding out that um yeah with um you really like with us you're more dominant we kind of are switches we kind of switch with each other but you're more dominant with me but with other guys i become more dominant to the guys yeah i noticed that a lot yeah and with females i i'm just i'm still honestly trying to figure out what i am with females but yeah i've noticed you still i don't know if i i don't know if i'm dominant i don't know if i'm more submissive i really don't know i think i need to uh experience with more of a one thing we did for sure figure out is that we are both bad at flirting with other people oh goodness just (laughs) god awful i didn't know that i did not think that we were that bad at it yeah well we also we've been with each other since my junior year of high school and i am now 20 or no my senior year of high school my junior year and your junior year and now I am 21 and you're about to be 21. So that's been a long time that we've only flirted with each other like in the beginning of our relationship. And flirting gets a whole lot different when you're almost five years in. And <laughs> so. yeah, so so we, we're we trying to figure out like when we're in public, we try to challenge each other. And actually we want to do a video of it where we challenge each other to go flirt with. Yeah, comment below if you guys want to see um, in public videos of us trying to flirt with other people. But we want to. We're trying to get used to it. I'm, I'm awful though. I, I he avoids freeze. them. Yeah, he avoids like all females. My here's actually a story that happened a few weeks ago. Um, I've been going to the friend, going to the gym with my friend Ricky, and <laughs> there's this girl there named Abby, and she was really attractive. And I told Ricky, uh, Ricky's very outgoing, very. <sighs> He's a good crazy co-worker, person, or yeah. friend, right? Yeah, and so he, he's he can talk to anybody just easily. Just start a conversation and extroverts. It's, it's amazing, honestly. I don't know how people do that, <laughs> but he goes up and he he starts talking, and I just put my headphones in, walk away, and go working out because I just freeze up and was Ricky I don't trying know to introduce to you? Huh? Was Ricky trying to introduce yeah, you? Yeah, he was trying to introduce me, and he's like, "Hey, want to meet my friend Cody?" And I just walked away. Oh my god! Headphones in. And <laughs> Yeah, I'm terrible. I just don't know what to do. I freeze and I panic just because I don't know how to talk to other girls. Um, And it's just like you don't it's not that you're afraid to do it. You're just you don't know how. I don't know what to say. I don't like everything's scary to say now. You don't know what you can say. You don't know. I don't know how to like I don't just know how to start flirting. a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think I have. I don't know how to flirt with guys like in person because I have my side job and I do what I have You're to do. You're very flirtatious with girls though. Yeah, I am very flirtatious with girls, but then it's sometimes kind of hard to tell if they're bisexual or gay or not because then they're just like, oh, no, no. Once they get like that, the actual confirmation that I'm bisexual and I'm trying to hit on them, they're like, oh, I'm not trying to do that. I was just being extra friendly. I'm like, oh, shit. So I have to like be able to pick up cues too. Yeah. yeah. But that's just, we're going to get better at it and hopefully we can uh we're gonna challenge ourselves for you guys yeah we're gonna challenge ourselves and hopefully we can film it for you guys eventually so you guys can see kind of how bad or if we get better at it you know what i mean i believe in us i think we're gonna do it because oh my gosh i want to see you flirt with other girls so bad i it's such a turn on am i i want to see you do yeah. it we'll see how long that takes though <laughs> but anyways next thing we wanted to kind of, i wanted to bring up was mm-hmm. i kind of wanted to talk about how like katie's well, Katie in episode, what was it? Three revealed that she... Episode two. Oh, wait, three. Yeah, three revealed that she has an OnlyFans account. And so I wanted to kind of talk about how at work, it is extremely difficult. She'll send me lots of pictures because she does OnlyFans. And like, hey, is this good to post? What do you think of this? Do you think this is good? And she works at home so she has all this time to edit it look at it do all this stuff in private (laughs) yeah nobody's around me she sends me them and i'm at work and it is extremely difficult (laughs) to try to help her with it and i've told her this many times that i don't know how i'm supposed to help you when i'm at work because it is extremely difficult first you get turned on and i work a 10-hour shift and that's a long time to get back to you i know and then second off like i constantly have people around me so it's so difficult and you know she'll even do the hidden but like swiping it for a second you never know when someone's gonna look so 
Being her reviewer has been extremely difficult for the past year. I've been doing better on it, though. Not sending as much. Only the important ones. I'm like, oh, I can't decide between these two pictures or not. I've it's, been doing... Uh, but both. it's so difficult. <laughs> and I'm sure if anybody else, any other guys, um, have a girlfriend that does OnlyFans, they would understand, too. It's extremely difficult. Uh, yeah, I can't be the only one that asked their, their significant partner for their opinion because he's got a good opinion. I can't help but ask well, him. And I understand. I understand why you do it. I mean... <laughs> Girls probably do it because their boyfriend's a guy and they'll know what guys want to see. I mean, I that's what I try to help you with. I always try to put my perspective into what other guys are, but I'm also not like the most freakiest guy like people out there. No kink shaming, but you know, there's people no into shame. all that other stuff like um, foot fetishes. And so it's hard for me to give feedback on stuff like that because I have no idea how yeah. to do any of that. But that you don't really sense. have people that are like into foot fetish on your account. No, not a lot of people come out with their kink, um, their kinks. I always say that I'm kink friendly. I'm always open to it and learning new things. I've actually, somebody was actually recently telling me about endurance sex and it's like, endurance sex is oh, pretty yeah, intense. Oh yeah, you about that. Where, Why don't you go ahead and explain that real quick. So endurance sex is whenever you having sex for, I want to say seven plus hours. And it's for people who have really high sex drives and pretty have a free day basically. And there was a story about this couple being completely bruised because they were trying for 12 hours and she was bruised everywhere and then his balls were bruised. I'm just like, good good king, I'm happy yeah, for I you. I will probably never do that because I, first off, <laughs> I can't even go past one time. I don't, what's, how, what's the longest that we've gone? I mean, the longest, like we, the way they do it is they edge themselves oh, yeah. and then they, they take a break for a second and then they keep going. Yeah, that's edge exactly what they do. Take a break, keep going. But we've done that sometimes though. So how long what, I know there's like at least well, 2 we hours. Don't, we don't do it endurancely for 7 plus hours. We oh. oh, I'm sorry. We only do it for maybe I think the longest we've ever had sex was maybe 2 hours because we were intoxicated. No. Those ones are usually like 45 minutes because we pass out. <laughs> But um, I don't think we'd ever try endurance sex. Not endurance, but we, like like when we were living not here, I don't remember where it was. Like we, there was a time where we weren't we were working at McDonald's, so we never had to get up early. So we did it for like two hours. Oh yeah, we just didn't care. That was fun. But uh, kudos to anybody who can, because that same couple that I was talking about, they were had having a goal to hit tw- twenty four hours of just sex. Yeah, and that's when they bruised. So it's just, we're which I ugh, that sounds very painful. I don't know if I'd ever. I would never do that. Actually, I don't think it yeah. probably turns them on. Good for you guys. Yeah, um, whatever makes you guys happy and turns you guys on. Just definitely not my thing. Hey, let me know what kind of kinks that are unknown because yeah, what I are you we're guys always into. Let us know. All right. Um. Now we're at the end of the show. Yeah, we really hope you guys enjoyed episode six. We were excited to record this yeah. one. And you know, this one wasn't necessarily uh too too uh, much of a juicy one to where we can push the the rules of the youtube but we still hope you enjoy but it. but we will have stuff like that in the future and we will we're kind of trying not to focus on the rules anymore because that'll allow us to give you guys more entertainment so this one wasn't necessarily that but we will get to that for you guys oh yeah we're gonna get real loose for you oh that w- <laughs> that was that's what she said <laughs> yeah. that is what she said uh, thank you guys again so much we really appreciate all your views and everything your likes your comments uh, the messages the questions yeah we really appreciate all the love we've been getting um we're close to hitting hitting some big milestones pretty soon i know uh, yes and, and more videos coming out soon more videos that don't relate to the podcast are going to be coming out very yeah. very soon see us out off the couch yes off the couch and somewhere else other than here i'm sure you guys are tired of seeing this couch yeah i know and we're gonna fly by through this don't forget oh Oh. sorry go ahead i didn't mean to interrupt you i was gonna talk about the instagram stuff what are you gonna say oh i was gonna say we're also real quick gonna be moving soon and this set is gonna be who knows it may be upgraded we may get a new furniture who knows what's gonna happen but we're excited to take you guys on that journey with us and yeah, uh, you you can get all the insights, the updates everywhere on Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can follow us like on our Snapchats, on our everywhere. We're on Facebook too. Follow, like, do whatever you gotta do. We really appreciate it. Also, hit that subscribe button wherever yep. it's at, and the bell. And don't forget to like this video as well as check out our Patreon. 
and comment what we were saying comment don't forget about like comment your kinks and then yeah now that we fixed the patreon we've got some Ooh, videos yes. in the in the brewing in the system and behind the scenes you really don't want to miss it yeah, patreon had to fix it for a second but it's all up and running so we're excited to show you guys that so we'll see you guys in episode seven all right see you guys Bye. have a great time